Okay. So we're now on question eight, and this is quite a long question. It's worth a total of three, four, five, six, seven marks, but it's quite a lot of um to do for those seven marks. So we've got a question about Clive now, and he's working for the local council, and he wants to check the cost of some taxi journeys to check, make sure that they um charge a reasonable amount. He asks for a suitable observation sheet. Now not actually very hard to get these marks, but you have to understand what an observation sheet is. It's basically a piece of paper of which you've designed so Clive can record this information, the fare and the distance of each journey. Okay, and he's going to need 10 taxi journeys. So basically it's just a table, an observation sheet. It's just a nice big table that he can use and just to put his information down. Really simple. So just nice and neat. Let's call it journey, and then let's have the the distance of that journey, and have the fare. So we need he's going to do ten journeys. So he needs ten different uh, pieces of information for the distance and the fare, and that will get us two marks. So one mark is for having room to put all 10 pieces of information down, and the second mark is making sure you record both the distance and the fare, which is what he needs. 10 marks. Oh, two marks, sorry. It'd be nice if it was 10. Uh, and Clive expects a strong positive correlation between the length of the journey and the fare charged. Well, positive correlation, if you remember from scattergraphs, positive correlation means that we're going to have a line of best fit, which kind of goes uphill. That's positive correlation. So anything that goes uphill means that as one increases, the other increases. So why you might expect this? Because uh, longer taxi journeys will cost more. Simple as that. If the distance increases, the length of the journey increases, the cost is going to increase as well. Okay, let's look at question part C. Well, I've just enlarged the scatter graph nice and big so we can uh, see what's going on. So this has got all the scatter graph filled in for us and this is the results for of his 10 journeys. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 crosses and uh, it also then ask us some questions afterwards. So the question says, what was the fare for the three mile journey? So let's go back. Three mile journey, what was the cost of a journey worth three miles? Well, it's this cross here, this is the one we want. But we've got to be really careful because in between four and zero has got to be two. So every big square is worth two. But that means every little square is not worth one, two, that's not worth one, or it's not even worth 10p, 10, 20, 30, 40, it's not 50p, it doesn't work. It's not worth 20p, because of those that go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, that would be one pound, not two pounds. So it's not worth 20p or 10p, it's worth double that, it's worth 40p. Each one of these little squares is worth 40 pence. One little square equals 40p and you've got to be able to spot that for yourself so actually if we go up and the length of the journey is there isn't it it's that's the three mile journey so it's four pounds and 40 80 so each one is 40p remember so it's 80p up so it's four pounds 80 you've got to be really careful on these because not all the graphs got about the same amount what would you expect to pay for a seven mile journey show how you obtain your answer well a seven mile journey let's go back let's look Seven mile journey. Well, there's no information for a seven mile journey. No information for a seven mile journey. So we're going to have to draw a line of best fit. Now, I reckon that if you get your ruler out and you try and line up your ruler, that your line of best fit is going to be something like that, somewhere along there. Which line the best fit? So let's 
draw that in. Let's have a look. Well, we've got a couple of points above and a few points below. It looks something along those lines, doesn't it? Okay. So let me just throw my ruler away, get it out of the way. Now let's go seven miles up now, and we come across here, don't we? Seven miles comes across there. So if we draw a vertical line at seven until we hit a line of best fit, it's exactly there. Let's draw a horizontal line straight across. See where it comes out. It comes out there. Now what's that? This line in between is 14 pounds. And remember, every little square is worth 40p. So it's 14 pounds 40, 14 pounds 80. So we'd expect a seven mile journey to be 14 pounds and 80 pence. And does the data support Clive's view about the expected correlation between the length of journey and the fare? Well, let's have a look. Well, yeah, we did have positive correlation. Our line of best fit goes, does go uphill. Okay, it's what we expected. Now, he expected strong positive. Uh, oh, too far back. He expected strong positive correlation. Um, so, there is positive correlation as the line of best fit goes uphill. However, however, the correlation is not strong. Why is it not strong? Because if we look at it, the points are a bit spread out. Strong correlation means if we had our scatter graph, a strong correlation would mean that when we try to draw a line of best fit, which would go up something like that, the points are very close to it. These points are a bit spread out from the line. So Clive said they expected to be strong positive correlation. Well, he's right, the fact there is positive correlation, however, that is not strong. So you can kind of argue either way really to get the mark. Let's go back and look at this and see, check you understand how I got this information from the scatter graph. Okay.